So another bit of news that we've we've got recently, um, there's been an announcement of a new film, Killers of the Flower Moon, that that was announced a while ago. We've had a bit of change in in roles as well. Um, so Harry, this is a score case. Oh, I'm not going to be able to say this. Oh no! You even it. practiced before the podcast and I have to say his name, and you <laughs> got, got it wrong. You tomato on point and. Look at that! Just completely bottled it. So it's score. Oh, score okay, uh, I've messed it up again. <laughs> this text is too small. Do I need? Do you want to get up a YouTube video and how to say it? Maybe. Scorsese. There we go. Hey. So for people that are not film nuts like myself, he's directed a number of <laughs> very big films. So Goodfellas, Shutter Island, Wolf of Wall Street, The Irishman, Taxi Driver. You know the list. The list goes on. He's worked with big names. <laughs> The Irish Man. I've not seen that one. I saw The Irishman, but I've not seen The Irish Man. <laughs> <laughs> I put that in my notes genuinely as well. Christ. Oh dear. You would think I'd do more research having you were, when joined you... a film podcast. There we go. There we go. Not seen it. So that's my excuse. There we go. That's, yeah, it's fine then, isn't it, really? What, what, what can we expect from this new film, guys? What, what are you thinking, <sighs> Harry? To be honest, the last Scorsese film I watched... No, actually, that's, that's not true. The Irishman I've seen... The Irishman's crap. But I don't like mobster films like that. And I don't think De Niro's a great actor. Shoot me. Come on, come get me. I don't like De Niro. I did, however, watch Silence a couple of months ago, which no one liked. And I thought that was amazing. <laughs> so, I, you know, I can't make my mind up. To be honest, it's going to be a big film and the cast is sick. So DiCaprio, probably, I think you've got to say the best actor of the modern era, apart from maybe like Daniel Day-Lewis. And I don't, I don't think Daniel Day-Lewis is as good as him. And then De Niro's in it as well, who other people think is the other best actor of, you know, the last 20, 30 years. And then adding to that, Jesse Plemons, who is a lesser known name, but really should become bigger. And I should have said him last week when we were talking about uh, severely underrated actors. Jesse Plemons is a really good actor. He's been knocking around for a while as well. He was in a show called um, Friday Night Lights. That was way back. That might have even been the late 90s, early 2000s. And he was really good in that. Has done a few other things since as well. Some really big films as well. Got some bigger roles. He was in The Irishman. So he's worked with Scorsese before. But this is him as a lead. Um, yes. So this is why this film is in, in the news. Because I think recently it was announced that DiCaprio had wanted to resign from this film. But what actually happened was he was originally playing the protagonist or the, the good guy basically in the film. And he wanted to change roles. So he's been made a kind of supporting antagonist or bad guy alongside Robert De Niro and Jesse Plemons has kind of come in to replace um, what DiCaprio's old uh, role was. So he's now the main protagonist, isn't it? I, I'd, yeah, I'd still be hopeful this is going to be good. I mean, it's weird because, again, so Scorsese's got a really weird relationship with these sort of streaming services. So The Irishman was produced by Netflix, um, so they spent a lot of money and some of it's p- rumoured to be because no one really wants to spend that money to produce a Scorsese film because they are a lot, you know, they do some like, they do anti-aging CGI and all this other weird stuff and it's three hours long, you know, it's a big undertaking. Whereas Apple are producing Killers of the Flower Moon because Apple TV have started their, well, I don't know what the streaming service is actually called, is it just called Apple Plus or something? I think it's Apple Plus, yeah. Um, and I don't actually know any of the titles on there. I don't think I know a single one. Um, but obviously they're trying to establish themselves alongside, you know, the Amazons and the, the Netflixes and the whatevers. So this is quite a big thing. And that's a lot of big actors, but Scorsese himself hates streaming services. It's kind of this weird irony that the only people willing to make his films at the moment are these streaming services. And he actually wrote an essay earlier this year saying that they essentially kill off filmmaking. I mean, I, I will actually quote him. The art of cinema is being systematically devalued, sidelined, demeaned, and reduced to its low and common, <laughs> lowest common denominator. And he said that's the people who've just given him funding to make his new film. The thing with that is that it's the exact same thing that happened with Spotify. When Spotify came out, everyone was like, this doesn't make any sense. How, like Artists aren't getting paid like anything for their music going out. But then very quickly it was like, okay, this is the world we live in. Like... This is the way yeah. you're going to get people watching or listening to your content. Um, and it could all come tumbling down. Like, realistically, I think stuff like Spotify, they were, I think there were talks about it like a, couple, like a year ago, a couple of years ago, about, like, if there's kind of group action against these streaming services, it could go very wrong. Yeah. Um, 
it would be really weird if we got to the point where it's like everyone's buying DVDs again. I kind of would love love that. Um, I, I don't even know if I've got a DVD player anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it's odd, isn't it? Because <laughs> Oh, yeah, Blu-ray, big dog. But the thing is, like, we live, we, we, especially given coronavirus, streaming has become the entirely the new norm. You know, all these films that were going to come out in cinemas just being released on streaming services anyway. Um it's, it's quite weird. So I don't, I almost don't think you could go back, you know, for as much as Scorsese laments about streaming services killing things. And I agree with him when he was talking about, you know, things like massive franchises like the, like the Marvel Universe being something that kills off original productions. I totally agree. But I don't think you can really hate streaming services for what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, they're producing your stuff, number one. So weird one. And obviously they do produce a lot of originals. I don't see streaming services making a lot of, you know, gr- yeah, Amazon have picked up Lord of the Rings or whatever, and Disney's doing all the Marvel stuff. But the Marvel stuff was going to happen anyway, wasn't it? Even if they didn't do it, someone else is going to do it. Well, the reason that Disney do Marvel, I don't know. This is my accounting degree coming in here. I've done case studies on like Disney own. Uh, sorry, yeah, Disney own Twenty First Century Fox and Marvel um, and Discovery. That that's why all of those productions are on their streaming service because they literally own all of those um all of those entities so you know i i get what he's he's trying to convey that we've had a change from traditionally what film has been about but you know it's not like what rory was saying with spotify where there's a question of you know are people getting rewarded for the content they're producing is this squeezing the film industry you know these streaming services are paying absolutely out of their asses for a lot of this content and they're paying exactly the same if not more in terms of producing films and buying original content than than otherwise so i don't i don't actually really understand what his argument is and why he would say that i don't know if we have that if we've looked into that or not i just think he quite likes being antagonistic to be honest because he's reached a point now where i think i almost think he's been left behind slightly style wise in terms of films you know when did he produce things like goodfellas and stuff i'm pretty sure that was sort of more uh, like late 90s films. And I yeah. think time has slowly sort of left his style a little bit behind. You know, really long films don't don't sit so well with people anymore. I, I'm, again, I don't think it's too much of them. Um, so I think, I don't know, I think it's slightly reactionary, especially given that he is putting out films still and people are still funding him. Um, but we'll have to see. I mean, I'm, I would still watch this film. Do you know, I, I'm still excited to see what he's making. Yeah, this, but is, this looks think, like... Yeah, it's can't even know. Display face seems a bit silly to me. Yeah, and let's just quickly address the film for people that might be interested. So it's it's based on a book, and it's not actually a fiction book; it's non-fiction. So this film is going to be actually based on true events, and it, it kind of follows loosely this group of uh, ethnically Native American people that were given land in America that had oil deposits. So they were going to inherit a lot of money and that led to jealousy amongst people in the area. And there were a number of disappearances and murders. And the FBI, this was in the 1920s, the FBI were established just before that. Um, And this was one of the first big cases that they investigated into mass murder in the area. Um, So the the protagonist in this is is an FBI agent that's trying to solve these murders. Uh, and the antagonists that are going to be played by De Niro and DiCaprio are going to be um, the people that are responsible for these disappearances. So, yeah, it, it sounds like it's got legs, to be honest. It sounds like this could be very interesting. Um, so I'm definitely going to be going to be watching it when it comes out. 